I want to walk you through the stages for upholstering your chair. This could be used on any chair where the seat the, uh, is recessed into a frame like this one here. This is one chair that I've just made and um, I've cut this plywood to fit onto the four corner braces and it works perfectly fine. I want to add foam to it, I want to add leather to it, but before I do that, I have to get this shape onto this piece of plywood. So I'm gonna show you how we go about getting that piece of plywood sized and ready cut to size. So I'm gonna bring my chair up on here. So old chair, new chair, whichever chair you have, I've made this chair but you may not be making it. Put this piece of wood. What I've done first of all is I cut this piece of wood to go directly in between the front and back rail with a 1 8 gap between this back rail and the, and the plywood. So that gives me 1 16th on the back, 1 16th on the front, maybe 2 mil on each side. So this will actually fit into the recess this way. You can see this is square, but this is splayed. Don't worry about that. What we're going to do first of all, is just find the middle of our piece of plywood. This could be any size, I'm not going to give you my size because yours may be different, but in this case, there's my center line there, so that gives me the center of my piece of plywood. I'm using plywood. I'm not an upholsterer, I'm not pretending to be an upholsterer, but this method has worked for me for 20 years. I've never been back, it looks neat, uh, I've never been back to a, any of my work in all those years. It's long lasting, especially if you're using leather and the foam stays just as foamy as it ever was, the ones I've seen. So I've got my center line and this is going to go on here. So what I want next is the distance between this back frame here and I've got 13 and a half. So I have to half that. So that's six and a half plus a quarter six and three quarters here and then I go to 13 and a half here that's given me the distance between those two areas there I'm just going to use a square up here this gives me that internal corner like that I'm going to mark up here that's going to tell me that this is going to go against the foam and on top of that is my leather. I want the distance, can you see, I want the distance between this face and this back face and then I'm going to deduct a sixteenth of an inch. So whatever distance I have, and I have half an inch, so I'm going to take this and measure my half inch and take off one sixteenth, so that's there. I'm going to use my finger like this and transfer this to here. These are square, the board is square so I can use any edge I want. This is going to be such a short distance so I mark these two on here like that. So these two now correspond to this distance. Let me just show you right inside there I think you can probably see how those two lines now mark the position of my plywood on here watch what happens now I make sure that's centered on there like that I'm going to mark this back edge here and I'm going to take just a block of wood anything you have will work for this Take a block of wood, put it onto here like this and slide it up between there and then make your pencil line here and make this pencil line here. Okay, now then. Square those two lines over onto the top like that. And even if your chair is out of square, this is going to mark the exact internal corners of this piece of furniture. So now what I need is the distance between the face of this leg here 
and the back of this leg here, which should be 13 and 3 eighths on my chair, but make it exactly what your chair is. And I actually am 13 and 5 16 And that's going to give us the perfect corner. Great. So I think now you'll see what we have are the cutouts. Now, if you wanted a chair where this fits around those two corners, you would add one sixteenth here. Can you see this? You would add one sixteenth here and one sixteenth here. And that would be enough of an allowance for your leather to go around those corners. I don't want these corners cut that way because I don't think it looks as neat because you get pulls in the leather that don't look very well. So now that could just be my inability as a non-professional leather worker. But I make a mark across that corner like that. And that I'm going to cut off. This is going to be exact sizing in a minute. So I take that corner off and I do exactly the same to the other three, like that. that. This, is, this is usually perfect sizing, it gets me exactly where I want to go. Get this out of the way just for a minute while I saw these. I'm going to use a, a fine toothed tenon saw to get this. <laughs> Let me show you which side of the line I'm sawing on. Normally, we would saw on the waist side of the line, but I'm sawing on the good side because I want this gap, this gap gives me a sixteenth of an inch or thereabouts and that gives me a space for the leather when I actually put the leather upholstery on here so that's why I've done this. Oops. Take your corners off, I'll have to go to a bigger saw here, see if this one will work. get me all the way. about this tear out here none of it's going to be seen but we're going to trim it anyway with a plane in a minute last one Nice and neat, clean, crisp corners. Let's take a look in the seat and see how it looks inside here. So I take this now, drop it in here, and we've got a perfect corners on each one of these. So what we do next, bring it up to the bench, And sight the front edge here, so we're sighting along this edge here for an equal gap along the front edge and the back edge. So I'm just trying to halve the distance between the front and the back, like this. 
and then I look at the gap here and the gap here and equal that out and it's all looking pretty good the back gap here and this corner here look good so I'm ready now just by eyeballing it I'm ready to mark the exact angles directly from the chair I can't bring the camera under here I don't need to because you can believe what I'm doing here I'll show you there I have the angles cut ready for <coughs> working so I cut those out now just using a couple of clamps just to hold my wood actually I might just use one clamp and a cross cut saw just extend that line up to the top those are the corner braces that stop me getting right to the corner but that's close enough now this is right on the wall of the seat frame of the seat um, aprons or frames rails so I'm going on the inside of this this line and I'm cutting exactly to the line can you see there Phil right there so I'm cutting exactly to the line but I'm on the good side not the waist side that's going to give me the sixteenth of an inch gap with just enough to trim off with my plane so this now gently in that last bit don't like do it like I just did no it's fine it worked out great this one same way I clamp really more for safety security and everything else waste side of the wood no I go on the good side again <laughs> Stay parallel to that line. Gently, I'm pushing this against the side of the plate to make sure it aligns perfectly. Now we're good for the uh, seat. This goes in here and I have the exact distance all the way around so the gap on the back is parallel to where I want it to be and um, I'm happy with this it's going to work very nicely the only thing is right on this back corner Phil can you get right into here I feel like this one is just a hair too tight and this one is too tight I've got a good gap here and I have a good gap down here so I'm going to cut this I'm going to put a, a mark from here 1 16th and 1 16th and just move that over with my plane because I don't want it too tight there the reason I don't want it too tight there is because it'll cut the leather as people sit on it and I don't want to cut through there I want the gap in other words So take that down just to the line here and the same on this edge we've 
good sharp plane. Okay, this is the upper side of the seat. If I stretch the leather around this corner like this, it, this shows a crease on this edge and I don't really want that hard edge because the, the, le the foam is going to be pulling it and it's going to show a hard edge. I don't want that edge so I'm going to take a, a, a quarter inch mitre or chamfer all the way around this down to this line like this. Just use your finger as a gauge like this. It's plenty accurate enough especially for this. So this is the underside of my seat, this side. This is the upper side. I've still got my up mark on there. Do this to your side so you can see. I've got my scrub plane here so I can take a heavy chamfer. So four strokes and I've got a perfect chamfer. Four. So I don't have to look anymore. This is taking off that hard corner. Front edge here. This is perfect for upholsterers too. Normally, this would have been made in the past, it would have been made with a wooden frame. You would have had um, some banding, some strapping, uh, burlap type strapping going across to form a web. And that would have given you um, enough support to then put some layers of fabric. I'm gonna go with my scrub again, just on the under edge two strokes just to take off the hard corner just a nice practice to be conscious that you want your chair if the joinery on your chair is going to last a long time you want the rest to the foam probably won't last the 200 years the chair will but it's replaceable Plywood is well proven now. I don't have any uh, objections to plywood. It's well proven. I'm sure this plywood in this situation will probably last for 80 years or 100 years. So there is the underside done and dusted. I still have saw kerf on these two edges. I'm going to take it out just because that could. I'm not saying it will, but it could telegraph through the, le the, the leather and show as an unevenness that corner just needs two shavings so I'm cleaning up my saw work one last corner and then that's the plywood close to finished with Now we've got to uh, there it is. just get rid of this because now you're going to be working in a minute with your upholstery and you don't want this being transferred inside your leather. Keep your workplace clean. So this is my upside here. So I just need a straight edge to take me from the centre of this, this, this and this and I got the center off the marks that I had from my layout just a center line here this is giving me the center of this the very center of my seat close enough it's not dead centered this way but it's centered between the points then here you could either measure or you could you, you could do really anything you want you could take your square and make your mark here and here. You want to be somewhere the same, two and three eighths, two and three eighths. And that's just giving me five crosshairs to bore 
five three quarter inch holes one two three four this allows the air to escape when you sit down and it allows the air back in when you stand up so we have to do this it's a common practice I'm going to bore on those marks just with a brace and bit what I do is I go right onto the crosshairs until that snail comes through then I back out and I go to the next one I counted eight so I'm going to do eight each time that should give me the snail one two three four five whoops didn't work six seven eight right on if I go all the way through it's going to splinter that's the underside of the chair seat one two three I don't want to leave the broken fragments on the underside or either side really one two three that's that so I got nice clean entry holes on this side even though it's not going to be seen go th into the center of those holes with the auger bit I don't want to burst through I want to go through with control Again, that other side, the side you're looking at, is not going to be seen. But I want it clean. And that's basically it for preparing for the upholstery. So now we have to look at the leather. And that's the next part of this. So there you have nice crisp clean holes on the underside and that will this is about where the bottom hits first on the padding on the leather pushes the air out you stand up the air comes back in and you're ready for your leather now we're going to show you how to make an upholstered seat like this one this would fit in a chair like this here sits into the corner it looks very nice when it's done i want to show you how you get there this one is actually vinyl not leather here's my leather this is the one i'm using for the demonstration but vinyl is very good for children's furniture cloth back vinyl it does last fairly well and uh, it's easy clean and it holds up uh, enough for the child years of your family so here I've got a two inch foam in this case you can go up to four inch you're going to compress the foam as you do the upholstery first off I've avoided using any machines in this so this is all handwork I've sharpened up a knife here if you don't know how to sharpen a knife like this uh, we show you on another video um, but this one is just a, a regular kitchen knife it's used for bread it could be a carving knife this one is serrated but there's no serration left in it because I've sharpened it so many times watch here I've sharpened this so I go through to there and then I pull in a continuous stroke like this separate the two out nice crisp clean edges move it around just so you can see make sure you're still flush with the edges and again get the knife down to the bottom make sure your knife is good and sharp I sharpened this one up for this all the way through separate and the last major stroke <coughs> is this one like this there we go now the corners obviously they have to come off so go down as far as you can to the bottom and pull if it's got a little stagger in there don't worry about it because this really does get compressed now my knife is super sharp so 
Probably yours will need to be this sharp, so be very careful. This. Now the way I've cut this foam, it, it probably is symmetrical, so I probably could flip it, but this is the upper part of my seat. I've done my air holes to allow the air to escape. I take this, place it on top of here. This shows me I've got to bevel these corners now. And again, I take a sharp knife and you can make marks on here if you want to, just to give you some kind of a guide. This is two inch foam, I want 45 degrees. So this line is one inch in from the edge around here like this. Just use your finger as a guide and a sharpie will leave its mark on here. So simple, effective. Now while I've got the long piece on here, I'm going to take this knife and take my corner down at 45, just eyeball 45. That's all we do. So I'm going right on the back line here. Pull. There's my 45. It's close enough. through the first piece, hold that and pull. If you can get it in a continuous stroke all the way through, all well and good. If you can't, just go back in, trim out that bottom edge a little bit. This gets super compressed in a minute, so whatever you've done is usually going to take out any flaws in your cut work. Through the first here and then pull in a continuous stroke You'll feel it riding on top of the foam after a while, but just go back in and cut. Now there's a little bit of a ridge there. You could go in, get your cut started, and trim off this a little bit nearer, but I wouldn't worry. This is going to trim out, uh, compress way down. that's it clean off your work area get rid of the excess that's my foam done so I can set that aside don't put it in the seat in case somebody sits on it so the still uppermost here here's my leather this is my next layer now I need to get two pieces out of my remaining piece of leather and what I want is I want to one thing I didn't show you is when you're using that knife, if you just have a little drop of oil, machine oil on here, wipe both sides, it'll stop the knife from pulling in the cut. You get a cleaner cut. That's that done. So here, again uppermost here. Now I want three inches all the way around. So I measure three inches from the long edge here. Move this until it's in position and three inches from the end. So I'm, this is going to be my lowest point here, I think. There's three inches there. I've got three inches there. Three and a quarter, I don't need that much. This gives me enough pull on my material, uh, enough leverage really, to pull my material around. You just work parallel to this edge. Like this. And then mark your three inches here, here, straight edge, just for your cut lines. Three inches from here. Leather is not very expensive. It's not as expensive as people think um, for upholstery. It's quite inexpensive usually. So there's my cut line. I can go straight to a knife. Oh, 
like this. So now we've pretty much got our materials ready to task. Oh, where's my pen gone? We don't want this on the leather. We don't want any sharp obstacles underneath. We've got to make sure we take care all of all of that. And uh, yeah, we want to make sure nothing marks the leather, so it's very important knives, staples, all of the things normally associated with things like this. We've got to be careful with. So one more mark. Here with the three inches on this side. And now we're ready to do our stapling, pulling our leather, and I'll show you how we compress the foam, how we stretch the leather, and how we staple it.